Maya Angelou born Marguerite Annie Johnson on April 4, 1928 and died on May 28, 2014 was an American poet, memoirist, and civil rights activist. She published seven autobiographies, three books of essays, several books of poetry, and is credited with a list of plays, movies, and television shows spanning over 50 years. She received dozens of awards and more than 50 honorary degrees. Angelo is best known for her series of seven autobiographies, which focus on her childhood and early adult experiences. The first, I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings, 1969, tells of her life up to the age of 17 and brought her international recognition and acclaim. She became a poet and writer after a string of odd jobs during her young adulthood. These included fry cook, sex worker, nightclub performer, porgy, and best cast member, Southern Christian Leadership Conference coordinator, and correspondent in Egypt and Ghana during the decolonization of Africa. She was also an actress, writer, director, and producer of plays, movies, and public television programs. In 1982, she was named the first Reynolds Professor of American Studies at Wake Forest University in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. She was active in the civil rights movement and worked with Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X beginning in the 1990s, she made approximately 80 appearances a year on the lecture circuit, something she continued into her 80s. In 1993, Angelo recited her poem On the Pulse of Morning, 1993, at the first inauguration of Bill Clinton, making her the first poet to make an inaugural recitation since Robert Frost at the inauguration of John F. Kennedy in 1961. With the publication of I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings, Angelo publicly discussed aspects of her personal life. She was respected as a spokesperson for black people and women, and her works have been considered a defense of black culture. Her works are widely used in schools and universities worldwide, although attempts have been made to ban her books from some U.S. libraries. Angelo's most celebrated works have been labeled as autobiographical fiction, but many critics consider them to be autobiographies. She made a deliberate attempt to challenge the common structure of the autobiography by critiquing, changing, and expanding the genre. Her books center on themes including racism, identity, family, and travel. Marguerite Annie Johnson was born in St. Louis, Missouri, on April 4, 1928, the second child of Bailey Johnson, a doorman and Navy dietitian, and Vivian, Baxter, Johnson, a nurse and card dealer. Angelo's older brother, Bailey Jr., nicknamed Marguerite Maya, derived from my or Maya sister. When Angelo was three and her brother four, their parents' calamitous marriage ended, and their father sent them to Stamps, Arkansas, alone by train, to live with their paternal grandmother, Annie Henderson. In an astonishing exception to the harsh economics of African Americans of the time, Angelou's grandmother prospered financially during the Great Depression and World War II because the general store she owned sold needed basic commodities and because she made wise and honest investments. Four years later, when Angelou was seven and her brother eight, the children's father came to stamps without warning and returned them to their mother's care in St. Louis. At the age of eight, while living with her mother, Angelo was sexually abused and raped by her mother's boyfriend, a man named Freeman. She told her brother, who told the rest of their family. Freeman was found guilty but was jailed for only one day. Four days after his release, he was murdered, probably by Angelo's uncles. Angelo became mute for almost five years, believing, as she stated, I thought, my voice killed him, I killed that man, because I told his name. And then I thought I would never speak again, because my voice would kill anyone. According to Marcia Ann Gillespie and her colleagues, who wrote a biography about Angelo, it was during this period of silence when Angelo developed her extraordinary memory, her love for books and literature, and her ability to listen and observe the world around her. Shortly after Freeman's murder, when Angelo was eight and her brother nine, Angelo and her brother were sent back to their grandmother. Angelou credits a teacher and friend of her family, Mrs. Bertha Flowers, with helping her speak again. Flowers introduced her to authors such as Charles Dickens, William Shakespeare, Edgar Allan Poe, Georgia Douglas Johnson, and James Weldon Johnson, authors who would affect her life and career, as well as black female artists like Frances Harper, Anne Spencer, and Jessie Fawcett. When Angelo was 14 and her brother 15, she and her brother moved in once again with their mother, who had since moved to Oakland, 
California. During World War II, Angelo attended the California Labor School. At the age of 16, she became the first black female cable car conductor in San Francisco. She wanted the job badly, admiring the uniforms of the operators so much so that her mother referred to it as her dream job. Her mother encouraged her to pursue the position, but warned her that she would need to arrive early and work harder than others. In 2014, Angelo received a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Conference of Minority Transportation Officials as part of a session billed Women Who Move the Nation. Three weeks after completing school, at the age of 17, she gave birth to her son, Clyde, who later changed his name to Guy Johnson. When I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings was published in 1969, Angelo was hailed as a new kind of memoirist, one of the first African-American women who were able to publicly discuss their personal lives. According to scholar Hilton ALS, up to that point, black female writers were marginalized to the point that they were unable to present themselves as central characters in the literature they wrote. Linguist John McWhorter agreed, seeing Angelo's works, which he called tracks, as apologetic writing. He placed Angelo in the tradition of African-American literature as a defense of black culture, which he called a literary manifestation of the imperative that reigned in the black scholarship of the period. Writer Julian Mayfield, who called Caged Bird a work of art that eludes description, argued that Angelo's autobiography set a precedent for not only other black women writers, but also African-American autobiography as a whole. ALS said that Caged Bird marked one of the first times that a black autobiographer could, as he put it, write about blackness from the inside, without apology or defense. Through the writing of her autobiography, Angelo became recognized and highly respected as a spokesperson for blacks and women. It made her without a doubt. America's most visible black woman autobiographer, and a major autobiographical voice of the time. As writer Gary Young said, Probably more than almost any other writer alive, Angelo's life literally is her work. ALS said that Caged Bird helped increase black feminist writings in the 1970s, less through its originality than its resonance in the prevailing zeitgeist, or the time in which it was written, at the end of the American Civil Rights Movement. ALS also claimed that Angelo's writings, more interested in self-revelation than in politics or feminism, have freed other female writers to open themselves up without shame to the eyes of the world. Angelo critic Joanne M. Braxton stated that Caged Bird was perhaps the most aesthetically pleasing autobiography written by an African-American woman in its era. Angelo's poetry has influenced the modern hip-hop music community, including artists such as Kanye West, Common, Tupac Shakur, and Nicki Minaj. Reviewer LCB Washington called Angelo the Black Woman's Poet Laureate. Sales of the paperback version of her books and poetry rose by 300-600% the week after Angelo's recitation Random House, which published the poem later that year, had to reprint 400,000 copies of all her books to keep up with the demand. They sold more of her books in January 1993 than they did in all of 1992, accounting for a 1,200% increase. Angelo famously said, in response to criticism regarding using the details of her life in her work, I agree with Balzac and 19th century writers, black and white, who say, I write for money. Young, speaking after the publication of Angelo's third book of essays, Letter to My Daughter, 2008, has said, for the last couple of decades she has merged her various talents into a kind of performance art issuing a message of personal and social uplift by blending poetry, song, and conversation. Angelo's books, especially I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings, have been criticized by many parents, causing their removal from school curricula and library shelves. According to the National Coalition Against Censorship, some parents and some schools have objected to Caged Bird's depictions of lesbianism, premarital cohabitation, pornography, and violence. Some have been critical of the book's sexually explicit scenes, use of language, and irreverent depictions of religion. Caged Bird appeared third on the American Library Association, ALA, list of the 100 most frequently challenged books of 1990, 2000 and sixth on the ALA's 2000, 2009 list. Angelo was honored by universities, literary organizations, government agencies, and special interest groups. Her honors included a Pulitzer Prize nomination for her book of poetry, Just Give Me a Cool Drink of Water For I Die, 